Ben and I put new videos out like this every week. So if you enjoy what we see you today, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to have you watching along. Tonight, I am finally going to stick a set of the Tusk pegs on the KLR650. Now, if you guys don't follow the channel or you miss those videos, I did stick a set of the cheapo Amazon pegs on here that don't have any springs or anything. I do also have the JNS Engineering non-dampened lowering brackets on here, which are an absolute necessity if you'd like to stand up on your KLR. I just sort of always feel like I'm still kind of going to come off of the pegs. I just don't feel like I have as sure of a footing as I do on the T7. So let's get these tusk pegs on here and see if they make a difference. So you just got to pull that guy out and follow by that guy. And that will just come right out. Clean that up like it's not just immediately going to get filled up with dirt. And look at these hoses here. Somebody was going to complain about that. I know you were. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did not realize how much bigger these things are. These are massive. We've also got a heck of a lot more teeth on the tusk peg, and I think these are going to grab a lot better than these sort of rounded nubs on here. Are they lighter? Oh, they're definitely lighter. They're way lighter. Wow. The springs in here are going to be pretty nice to have, too. Only I can figure out how to use them. Ooh, those are stiff. That's going to be nice. Wow, those look monstrous on there. <laughs> definitely excited to test these things out. So I'll get the other one installed and then we'll take this thing out on the road and see how these feel. So I've actually had these on the bike for a while now. I haven't put a whole lot of miles on them, but I thought today on this beautiful, nice warm February Wisconsin day, we would go out and talk a little bit about my experience with them so far. Who says you can't motorcycle year round in Wisconsin? Just kind of not mind getting a little bit of dirty water and possibly some salt on your bike, I guess. <laughs> so on the pavement and at high speeds, I really have not noticed any negative effects with these at all. The non-dampened JNS lowering brackets on here, supposedly a little bit more vibey. Honestly, I, I don't really think that I've ever noticed that these vibrate any more than they did with the, the isolators on there. But anyway, I don't think the tusk pegs have added to that at all. As icy as I feel like this should be, It actually doesn't seem like it's all that bad. I guess it's been a while since I've been on my Tenere. Uh, I always had said that I liked how that felt standing up more than this did. I think because these maybe are just sort of accidentally angled up a little bit, or I guess maybe it's on purpose, the pegs no longer feel like they're drooping because I think even with the JNS brackets, they feel like they do have a little bit of sag. And now with these on here, I don't feel like I'm sliding off the pegs uh, one bit. They definitely are much, much, much better and I think worth the uh, the extra bit that you pay for them. So I've got some comments from people recently uh, with concern uh, for the fact that this channel has sort of turned into uh, just a advertisement for Rocky Mountain ATV and I, I, I definitely understand how it could look that way. For one thing I just really have not had the time uh, to make a whole lot of content and it's a lot easier to just put parts on in the garage than it is to you know spend a couple hours out riding especially since it's winter time here. I have been getting uh, an awesome amount of business for my new business so I've been really busy with that. I do plan on getting out and doing some some real adventure riding and putting the KLR and all these parts that I've put on it to the test. I'm really surprised that I have not felt the front tire slip at all. I mean these are some pretty aggressive tires but they're definitely not made for this stuff and I don't know with this all packed down like that I guess it must just be because it's warm but I sure would have thought that it'd be a little slipperier. I guess it is. It's a little slick. Just have been riding gingerly enough that I haven't lost the front end, I guess. <laughs> I should probably take it easy. There's some gravel. Squishy gravel. I've actually got a bunch of grip studs left over from studying the TW. Uh, initially, my plan was to do both bikes, but I don't think I bought quite enough uh, to support the KLR to get it moving. Even the, the amount that I've got on the TW, which is right around, I think, 150, actually a little bit more uh, per wheel. So 300 total. That did okay, uh, but then we just pretty much got too much snow, so I haven't really been able to, to get out and test them. I think you just need something a little bit longer. Like a little deer. But I think that I'm going to be picking up another motorcycle uh, next weekend, I think it is. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's still there. Everything I've tried to buy this winter, it seems like somebody always beats me to it, or about two other people are in line ahead of me. And... Uh, this bike I'm, I'm really pretty excited about. I said I was going to buy the Trans Alpha A 750, but uh, I'm just not 100% sure that that's the route I want to go now. I was really pretty set on it, and I don't know, now I'm thinking maybe I want, want something a little bit more dirt oriented. 
Hello dear. Well, I didn't like my fishtail. It is a used bike. I guess it's fairly new. I think it's like 2016. So let me know what you guys think it is down in the comments. I actually, uh, on something that I posted, somebody guessed that I was hinting at that I was going to be buying one of these, which was not the case back then, but now, oddly enough, it, it looks like I might be getting one. So, I don't know, I'm pretty excited about it. It's something that I've never owned before. Uh, it's the type of bike that I guess I've never owned before. I'm pretty pumped about it, honestly. So, hopefully that all comes together and we'll have a new bike very soon. You guys all just waiting around for me to fall down? I kind of am too. <laughs> I don't know why I keep tempting fate. I was just out on the asphalt and could have kept going that way, but for some reason I'm out here now. <laughs> I have one dirty bike. Oh well. Feels good to be on the gravel again. Could be a little less wishy-washy, but that's alright. Seems like the, the Tusk tires are keeping me planted enough anyways. Whoa! Yeah, everything's pretty mushy out here. It's actually supposed to be really warm next week too, so maybe there'll be some more motorcycle videos in the very near future, I guess. I was hoping for sled videos yet. Maybe get out in the four-wheeler too. I guess you could probably do that either way, but it's quite the warm winter we're having. Hey, look at these guys. <laughs> seem to appreciate this <laughs> not too often you could do both in the same day but once in a while in Wisconsin Ooh, this this seems like ice this seems like a bad idea a little bit of slushy snow even hard pack snow that's okay you get on ice you should really have studs <laughs> here we go and more ice you always got to watch what you're doing on a motorcycle and what everybody else is doing but in winter it's definitely a, a whole nother ball game. You really gotta watch the surfaces you're riding on and you really gotta watch for traffic because as much as they're not looking for you in the middle of winter or in the middle of summer, they're definitely not looking for you in the middle of winter. Been out on the river with the sleds, huh? I don't think I would do that today. Doesn't take much to get the rivers going and flowing, opening up. There we go, now we can say I've been out in the lake this year. Always good to be on the areas where nobody's made tracks. A little bit more easy to anticipate what's gonna happen. are what muskrat push-ups I think right now what does that maybe not I don't know all right guys well I think I'm just gonna call it a day I'll probably cruise around for a little bit and then go uh, I guess hose this thing down <laughs> Bet people ask questions about that and usually I, I don't ride in the winter time when there's any salt on the road I'll sneak out kind of after a rainstorm or when things are really dry today I just couldn't help myself I Figured there might be some water running across the road and I might end up in some slushy stuff and I don't mind the dirt in the water, but the salt probably is uh, something you want to wash off your bike and I think what I'll do is probably just go home, hook this up, hook the hose up to the hot water and just spray it down as best I can. I won't worry about any soap or anything and nah, I guess we'll just hope it's all right. It should be okay. Vehicles make it years and years before they really start to rust and I think some of that's intentional anyway, so you buy a new one, but 
hopefully the old KLR can handle a little bit of salt. So thanks for watching guys, hopefully this video was interesting and worth watching. If you guys have any comments on what you've been feeling about my videos and what I've been putting in them, feel free to let me down in the comments. I am always open to constructive criticism and I definitely want to put out stuff that you guys do want to watch. So feel free to let me know if you want to see more or less of something else down there. And uh, other than that, guys, take care, stay safe, stay swanky, get out and enjoy this beautiful world any chance you can. And hey, if you can't do that right now, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime. And here's another, uh, another salt puddle. The Salt River. What a beautiful day.